My name is Maurice Brown. Today I'm going to talk about the I-81 Viaduct. The city of Syracuse, nicknamed the Salt City, has one of the most important decisions of its almost 200 year history in front of it. There is a highway called Interstate 81 which runs north to south through the center of the city. There is a 1.4 mile stretch of highway that separates the downtown and university areas. This stretch is called the I-81 Viaduct. The viaduct is deteriorating. Renovations need to be done in order to keep it compliant and updated with federal safety guidelines. The proposed I-81 viaduct project is expected to cost at least $1.3 billion, with some tunnel estimates going as high as $4.5 billion. There are several options the city has available that will make it up to code with the federal guidelines. The three that are most likely are the tunnel grid hybrid option, the community grid or street level option, and the viaduct with considerable design improvements. Save 81 is a diverse coalition of concerned citizens, elected officials, employers, unions, and community groups that believe any plan to rehabilitate the aging portions of I-81 must preserve the highway's current traffic pattern and alignment through the region, particularly the stretch of I-81 that runs through and connects our community with downtown Syracuse. This group has been one of the leading voices for the Keep Traffic Flows the Way They Are movement. On their website, they explain all the good things that accompany keeping things as they are. As stated on their website, I-81 is a vital transportation backbone for our region. And we believe that altering it would cripple a regional economy already struggling in the wake of a national financial crisis, endanger public safety, undermine the region's ease of accessibility, overwhelm the infrastructure of neighboring communities and hurt local employment. However, there is another side to their argument. Rethink 81 is a grassroots organization calling for more comprehensive and well thought out design options for the I-81 Viaduct project than have been presented to the public to date. On their website they state freeway removal does not require a major shift to transit. Removing an urban freeway will in and of itself change travel patterns significantly. Travelers will find alternate routes and travelers will choose the most convenient modes for their trips. This claim is backed up by a study put out by the Department of Transportation in the fall of 2016. The biggest reason for keeping things the way they are is possible longer commute times and that isn't true. It's fiscally irresponsible to spend the extra $400 million. Another flaw of the viaduct plan is that in order to keep the viaduct and have it meet federal guidelines, an estimated 30 to 35 buildings would need to be purchased in order to clear space for a curved roadway that can accommodate 60 mile per hour traffic. This drives up the cost as well as puts those property owners in a predicament of having to find out where to relocate their business. In an article published in May of 2016, Syracuse.com outlined which buildings would be affected. The next option I am going to discuss is a community grid option, which was endorsed by Syracuse Mayor-elect Ben Walsh. The community grid would disperse traffic throughout the city by promoting broader use of the existing street network. North and south headed vehicle traffic would be channeled through Almond Street and along parallel corridors such as Krauss Avenue, Irving Avenue, State Street, and Townsend Street. Existing through traffic would be rerouted onto Interstate 481, which goes around the county's eastern parts and reconnects in the north. The benefits for this option include its price tag. It is the cheapest option with a price tag of $1.3 billion. It is cheaper than a viaduct replacement by over $350 million. Another benefit is that the removal of Interstate 81 viaduct would free up development approximately seven acres of land downtown currently owned by the New York State Department of Transportation. The potential exists to accommodate 138.8 million in property value on this land, which could bring an additional 5.3 million in property tax revenue to the local governments each year. This is a conservative estimate given the real estate development opportunities that would open up beyond the footprint of the state's right of way. Some criticisms of the community grid are that excessive traffic could cause congestion and traffic jams, which could make traveling downtown a nightmare. This would especially be a problem because the city's major hospitals are located along this juncture. Several citizens have written letters to Syracuse.com like this one. The writer speaks on their experiences and writes, gridlock will occur. 
parking will be greatly reduced and people will seek venues out of the city to dine or for entertainment. Whenever there is a big event in Syracuse, the downtown streets are clogged and intersections are blocked, impeding traffic flow. The writer did not cite any sources, and I haven't been able to find any DOT, FHA, or credible sources relevant to the subject that agree with those statements. However, people are thinking of these things. The last option I am going to discuss is a tunnel community grid hybrid option proposed by State Senator John DeFrancisco. This option allows for both viaduct and grid supporters to get fragments of what they want and establishes somewhat of a compromise between the two. Supporters of the community grid would get what they want in that it would allow for a grid-like street on top of a tunnel which would allow the current traffic flow to remain the same and pass beneath the city. There are some obvious benefits to this option. Both sides get somewhat of what they want. However, just like the others, there are some serious flaws in this plan as well. The New York State's Department of Transportation had removed the tunnel as an option, citing the tunnel's nearly $3.1 billion price tag, which is twice as much as any of the other options, as well as it taking 9 to 10 years to construct, as opposed to 4 to 6 for the community grid and 5 to 7 for the viaduct options. As recently as Monday, December 4th, the tunnel option has been in the news again after a $2 million study determined the tunnel option is feasible but would cost between 3 and $4.5 billion. This price tag, however, is a conservative estimate given it doesn't take into account staffing that a tunnel would require, tunnel maintenance, water pumping, and things of that nature. What was not mentioned in these pros and cons was the environmental impact these options will have on the community. The Department of Transportation is preparing an environmental impact study which will show the impact each option will have on air quality, natural resources, hazardous waste, and other environmental considerations. The city of Syracuse is faced with many options for the future of the I-81 viaduct. There are local leaders on each side of this issue, as well as others still making up their mind as to which is best. The decisions they make will be felt for generations to come. The decisions will decide what kind of city the children of Syracuse will inherit. Thank you.